Well, that's cool. That was a nice little bow. But as I said before, I like to know who are the British soldiers we're talking about. Well, it so happens that I've studied one of the British regiments that served in Rhode Island in great detail. And it so happens that regiment was not the 54th Regiment. But the 22nd Regiment, which I have studied in a lot of detail, provides a pretty good example. So I'm going to talk a lot about that regiment. And when you think about British soldiers in general, this will give you a fair perspective on it, even though I'm not talking about the exact same data set here. There were three British regiments that served in Rhode Island for the entire time that it was occupied, which was from when? 1776. December 1776, yeah, October 79. Uh, the 22nd, 43rd, and 54th regiments were here from the beginning. Uh, the 22nd, 43rd stayed till the end. The 54th left a few months before they left in about June of 1779. And a couple other regiments came in the meantime, but these are the ones that were here most of the time. Um, we're going to be looking mostly at the 22nd Regiment. Every regiment had its distinctions, of course. Everyone's a population of people, and it had its different ways that it did things. But most of the stuff I talk about in a broad sense of the kinds of people that British soldiers were applies pretty equally to all three of these regiments. So let's look first at the nationalities. These guys are all British, right? In a lot of books, you'll see it called the English Army, and that's a little bit of a rub because not everybody who's British is English, right? You know, this British includes Scottish people and Irish people, Welsh people, a few others scattered here and there. So it's really a British army, as we'll see more. And in the same way, um, oops, we'll go back one. I don't know, we'll go through that. Uh -oh. There we go. Let's go back one. Um, when we talk about German soldiers in the American Revolution, we use the term Hessians, and not all the Germans were Hessians, because Hesse is a particular part of Germany, and they didn't all come from there. And this may sound like just semantics, but imagine if people were talking about the American army and the American Revolution, and they kept calling it the Virginian army. Because, of course, George would be commanders from Virginia, so why not call it Virginian, right? Well, calling this the English army is kind of like calling the American army the Virginian army. You know, it doesn't really fit the people of it anyway. Um, a lot of texts talk about British regiments in terms of the counties that they came from. We love to talk about the Cheshire Regiment, the Devonshire Regiment, and the South Staffordshire Regiment, and the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, and all these things. And this is very nice, except these county titles were given to these regiments in 1782. When did the American Revolution begin? 1775 was when the fighting began. You know, when did it end? 17, it ended in 1783. How much relevance do you think these county titles that were given in October of 1782 had on the regiments that were actually fighting them? All right, none whatsoever. And there's even more to it than that. But basically, regiments at this time didn't come from specific places. I get questions all the time from genealogy people saying, my ancestor served in the Norfolk Regiment. So where in Norfolk was he from? It's like, well, he was from Scotland. He was from Ireland. He wasn't from Norfolk at all. Forget about all that. Um, there were even regiments that had regional titles, like the Royal Welsh Fusiliers, and guess what? There were hardly any Welshmen in the Royal Welsh Fusiliers during this time period. These were just honorific titles. They didn't really tell you much about the actual regiment. So I talk about the regimental melting pot. Every regiment has a mix of nationalities in it. County titles weren't given until 1782. I probably shouldn't have duplicate bullets, but I do. A given British regiment recruited from all over Great Britain. Why? Well, because they could, and because when they were serving in Great Britain, they moved from place to place. Each regiment did its own recruiting. There was no central recruiting function like you have in the Army today, where you go to a recruiting office. If you want to enlist in the Army, you go find a recruiter. He's from a given regiment. You enlist into that specific regiment. Maybe there's two competing regiments in the same town. So you and go to each one and say, hey, you guys going off to a war zone anytime soon? And they say, well, yeah, we've been in Great Britain now for like seven or eight years. We'll probably be going overseas soon. You say, okay, thank you. Go to that guy over there. His regiment just got back from being overseas. They're going to stay here for a long time. I'll miss the that. 
Or vice versa, if you're a young man and you hate your job and you want to go overseas, you go to that other regiment that's going overseas. I'm asking, uh, sure. did they, the British, did they um, all volunteer or was that we'll a... We'll talk about that more later. We're, okay. we're actually going to talk about the specific topic now. It's one of my right. favorite ones. Right. So we'll get there. So we have recruits actually from... We actually, during the American Revolution, have recruits in British regiments who came not even from Great Britain, but from continental Europe. So in any given British regiment, you're going to have mostly British soldiers, but you're liable to have a few Germans and a few Poles and a few Swedes and a few Czechs. Now I say a few, you're talking one or two individual men in that regiment of how many in a regiment? 500. Yeah, about 500 men. So you might have a Swedish guy, and a French guy, and a couple of German guys, but most of them are going to be actual bona fide British guys. So we'll look at the 22nd Regiment. In 1774, this regiment was inspected, and the paperwork from that inspection survives, and it gives a breakdown of exactly what the national mix was. 197 English, 174 Scottish, 48 Irish, and three foreigners. And those foreigners happen to include two Germans and one American, because if you're in the British Isles, somebody born in America is a foreigner. Right? Um, by 1778, when the regiment was here in Rhode Island, we don't have as clear a definition of an exact breakdown, but through a lot of uh, other referential material, I can say that there are more or less 263 English, 161 Scottish, 117 Irish, 39 foreigners. Um, you can see the regiment, if you do your math really quick, is a lot bigger during the war than it was before the war. Well, that makes sense. They increased the size of the regiment. And the proportions have changed a little bit. So really, by having a bigger regiment, you have about the same number of Scottish. Well, really, the proportion of Scotsmen has gone down. The proportion of Irish has gone up. The proportion of foreigners has gone up. This kind of thing happens year over year over year, the result being that it's hard to characterize a British regiment as being any singular way, unless you're looking at a specific time period, because it changes. 54th Regiment, they were inspected in 1775 before they came to America, 234 English, 60 Scottish, 66 Irish, 5 foreign. You pick any given British regiment serving in America, you're going to find a mixture like this with varying proportions of English, Scottish, Irish, and foreigners. Now, any given regiment is, with a few exceptions, is going to be predominantly English. Why do you suppose that is? Well, if I were to look at the population of England and Ireland and Scotland and Wales, sure enough, there's a lot more English people than there are Scottish people and Irish people at the time. And these proportions more or less mimic, you know, plus or minus the proportions of the overall population. The reason I don't have Welsh broken out on here is because in the British military documents of the time period, they don't break out Welsh separately from the English. The population of Wales was only about 4% of what the population of England was, so there weren't many Welshmen regardless, but we just don't have them broken out separately. Sometimes we have somebody with Welsh heritage in the audience. Where are my people? Well, I don't know. 